How to manage musculoskeletal pain. In 2019, researchers published an article about the so-called consistent recommendations for high quality clinical practice guidelines. In the following three videos, we will tell you what the 11 recommendations are and how we think they could be used to inform clinical practice. A practice guideline is a recommendation based on a systematic review of all available research on a particular topic. A systematic review is considered to be a reliable source of evidence to guide clinical practice. In short, this video is about the best available advice for clinicians and patients at the time of publication. In the article, the authors summarize what they call common problems in musculoskeletal pain. These include overusage of imagery, surgery and opioids, as well as a failure to provide education and advice for anyone who suffer from pain. The first of the 11 recommendations is that care should be patient-centered. For care to be patient-centered, the patient's thoughts, knowledge, beliefs, experience and goals must drive the management. From a therapist's perspective, this means listening to the patient's perceptions of where, how, when and why they hurt. As a therapist, you can use the information to understand what is important to your patient and where your beliefs about the nature of the problem may differ from that of your patient. As you may have already experienced, it is essential for good clinical practice that the clinician and the patient arrive at a shared understanding of the problem and the goal. If you are a therapist working with non-specific musculoskeletal pain and you want to embrace a patient-centered model, the article suggests that you focus on 1. your communication, 2. the context and 3. shared decision making. Here are some examples on how one might apply these three recommendations. 1. Communication. It is important that you spend sufficient time with the patient to create trust and show empathy. You could also use techniques such as active listening, open questions, supportive body language and motivational interviewing to get the patient involved in the shared decision process. 2. The context. Focus on the context, not only the patient. We know that pain is influenced by many factors, including those related to work, social life and the financial situation of the patient. So the interview with the patient should try to cover the person behind the patient rather than the pathoanatomical symptoms. 3. Shared decision making. By sharing with the patient what you know about their pain and what you will learn about them, you will not only validate the patient's pain and disability, you will start to build a therapeutic alliance with the patient. The therapeutic alliance will make it easier for you to share your expert knowledge which in turn will help the patient make more informed decisions regarding their condition and how it can be managed. In the next video you will learn about recommendations for screening diseases and factors that can influence the time for a patient to return to work.